family starts, they racing out here, boy. Look at my man, he got a mint sticker on the back of his car. It's over, buddy. <laughs> There's a lot of people angry, by the way, out here about uh, Obama winning again. Like, like they didn't know he was going to win again. Anyway, I'm not going to get into that, but a lot of people are angry, boy. they like, I can't believe it. they like, want to leave the country type of shit. But, uh, you know, the bottom line is that, that I, you know, I believe strongly that no matter who's in office, you know, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta participate in your own life, man. Ain't, ain't, no, nobody's gonna take care of us, you know. Nobody's gonna take care of us, no matter how noble you think a person is. You know, at the end of the day, you have to do your part. You have to do your part. You know, you want change, you gotta participate in that change. You gotta be active in that change. You know, and I, I think that a lot of us are dependent on on yeah. on the government or, or this system to you know, to create to create jobs, you know, to create wealth, to create opportunities and I think it's the other way around. I think I think we need to tap into our creative abilities and utilize our gifts, talents and resources to to create opportunities for ourselves and uh, and create uh, opportunities for others as well. You know, I believe we have to create our own path, man. We have to we have to be in alignment with with our being and and follow follow that intuition, follow that inner voice, follow our instincts, follow our those hunches that we feel inside that we can hear if we quiet the mind a little bit, you know, all this noise that's, that's in our heads, that, you know, what I got to do tomorrow, what I want to do, what happened yesterday, oh my God, I got to go to work, and, uh, 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 there's all this noise, and then the distractions, you know, we're watching all these television programs, or we're on the computer, or, you know, it's just, if it's not, if it's not for, for progress, if it's not about building, if it's not about, you know, working towards changing and evolving and you know it just I think it's just a waste of time man it's just a waste of time and a lot of us are so a lot of us are in survival mode we're just thinking about surviving getting by you know paying a bill and we don't think about the next generation you know we're not thinking about creating a better situation you know, down the road, even for our grandchildren, you know. Um, there's a saying, uh, you know, from the Native Americans, something to the effect where they they make decisions based on seven generations ahead, man. You know, and that's the same thing I come to as far as goal setting. If your goal is just to get a job, you know what I mean? Like, you hear, well, what do you want to do with yourself? You know, what do you... Well, uh, I just I just want to get a good job, you know, and then you get the good job and it's like you just sit back because that was what you were shooting for, and then you become miserable and complacent again, and then it's like the job is a problem. I can't stand it. And, well, I need more money, and and you know we it's like we we put ourselves in this victim role, you know, like like shit is happening to us. I'm I'm all this bad luck. I'm cursed and. Uh, and you know that's, that shit is bullshit, man. It's all bullshit. You know we've been conditioned to to feel like victims. And I'm not saying that you know things are not challenging, things are not rough, because it is. And and you know what? It's supposed to be. You're supposed to be challenged. You're supposed to have opposition, but not in a negative light, but just. You know, you need the negative to complement the positive. Like when you work out, you know, you have negative resistance, right? Where if I'm doing a, if I'm doing bench pressing, right, and I and I'm pushing, when I'm bringing that weight down, a lot of us bring it down fast, and we we neglect the negative the negative resistance. It's about controlling that weight as we bring in the as we bring in the bar down, right? And then 
raising the bar back up, we're working a whole nother group of muscles, you know, inner inner muscles, core muscles that need to be strengthened. And the same thing applies with life. And I know it's hard to stay in that, that frame of mind, man, when we're in the midst of all this craziness, man, but, you know, if we, if we take full responsibility for what's happening in our lives, you know, and we, 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 we're, we're accountable for, for what's happening, we begin to take responsibility and change and make some adjustments, and you feel better. You know, you instantly feel better, like, okay, because there's hope. All right, so I could, I, could, I could get myself out this mess, you know, and it's, it's about changing the inner environment. It's about changing our thought process. It's about changing the feelings and, and the beliefs. We could change a feeling, man. We could change a thought. We don't have to entertain this stream of fucking thoughts that's in our head constantly, you know. It's a recession. I got to pay the bill. And my, my baby's father. Why this dude, dude ain't call me? And, you know, all type of stuff going on in our heads, man. And, you know, it's sad that it takes crisis. It takes crisis to bring us together. You understand? It's like, why does it take something drastic to happen in our lives for us to to be civil with each other? And yeah, there's a little chaos and stuff, but you know, why don't we extend a hand when things are good? You know, when you find yourself in, a, in an opportunity or, or something is happening in your life that's 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 pleasurable. Why not share those pleasant feelings with other people? Why not reach out? Why not give a compliment? You know, why not do these things that that actually build momentum and build and, and help us to propel? It propels us forward. So, you know, I get I get ridiculed. I remember amongst my peers, especially when I was in prison. You know, I, I, I in prison is when I started to really voice a lot of my views and, and share a lot of my writings and, you know, and, 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 and a lot of people are afraid. A lot of people, you know, I, I looked at it as, as, like, let me give you an example. I woke up one day on a Saturday morning. I was in Clinton Annex. I was in a, in a, in a, in a violent program that they had for violent offenders, and it was called Merle Cooper for those who, who were incarcerated and know. And on Saturdays, you're allowed to use the kitchen, the stove, and, 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 and the stuff at between, like, I think it was like 7 in the morning to about 10 in the morning. And then they closed it down from 10 in the morning to 1 p.m. So you couldn't cook anything between 10 and 1 on the weekends. So I remember waking up one morning, and I was late. And I was hungry, you know, because I was working out at the time and stuff. And I was like on a regimen where I, I was eating every two or three hours. And when I got up, I was late. So I was a little frustrated, right? And when I went to look at the menu and what they was having for, for, for lunch, they had some Salisbury steak with potatoes or some shit that I couldn't stand, right? Because I did a lot of box time. And it was killing me with the potatoes, but so I was disappointed. I remember walking away from the menu, right? And I was walking through the day room, and I was like, "Hell, the, the fuck!" You know, nobody, nobody hustles food around here, you know. And I threw it in the air, and as I was walking back to my cell or to my, you know, wherever I stood at room, I guess, I said to myself. So why don't you, why don't you do it then? Why don't you make the breakfast, you know? And I remember going around, I said, you know what, I'm going to do that shit. So I got with a few of my friends that was in there, and I was like, yo, let's start making breakfast, man. Let's start selling some breakfast. And I started going around and telling people, yo, I'm going to have breakfast now. You know, pancakes, you know, eggs, uh, French toast, baked turkey bacon, you know, like, but they sold all that stuff in the commissary. And I remember people, you know, what are you, starved? Dave Bucks? You know, what do you think you are? Dave Hop? You know, uh, you know, we crack jokes on each other. You know, that's how we, we show love, right? They were criticizing me and, and ridiculing me and stuff. And I'm going to tell you something. After a couple of weeks, and what I would do is on Friday nights, I would collect a 
bowls from people. And I asked them what they wanted, and they would put their order inside the bowl, and then they would pay me for a plate of food. I, I would charge them five dollars, man. I'll charge them a pack of cigarettes. I'll charge them the equivalent in stamps. I'll charge them, you know, food from the store when they go to the store. And it got to a point where there was like ten of us. We had both stoves locked down, four eyes, you know, the two stoves, and we was we was killing them. You know, we was killing them. And I remember it got to a point where my locker was so full, I had I had food everywhere. I had sodas everywhere. You know, I had stamps galore. And, and they still doing that today. You know, they still... I missed my exit. Anyway, they're still... They're still doing it, man. And that's amazing to me. So... You know, you gotta be innovative, man. You gotta be innovative. You gotta be creative. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta pave a way for yourself. And you know, I forgot to tell you the other part of the story that after the thing started to grow, now people wanted to be down with me. Yo, I, I could make good pancakes. Y'all make cinnamon pancakes. Yo, uh, yo, uh. cause you know people needed money. You know, a lot of people in prison, man, they don't get shit. They don't get visits. They don't get mail. They can't call anyone, man. That's, that's a rough fucking bid, man. And I don't know why. I don't know if their family cut them off. I don't know what type of crimes, you know, they, they committed that that warranted them being, you know, cut off. But I just know that, that we just got to pave our own way, man. We got to pave our own way. Anyway, tune in. Tune in. 103.3 WGIV. I'll be in the radio station in a couple of minutes, y'all. All right, peace.